Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with another one of my friends and subscribers from my channel that is in my Discord server, my own private Discord server. If you're interested in how you want to access that, as well as entry into monthly giveaways, you can definitely go check out the Patreon link to my own personal Patreon that is in the description. If you want to support me directly, you can definitely do so there, as well as, like I said, get access to my Discord server and also get access to a monthly giveaway that I'm doing. But, other than that, what you see on screen is very much a alpha build of a deck that I'm actually very curious to uh, to try out. I have this thing where I just going on binge like theory crafting sessions in my mind and then I actually build them as decks and I actually want to play them for the channel because I mean I really think that it's very interesting how you could splash Zodiac into literally almost anything and actually have it benefit the deck. So what you see is Zodiac Desk Bots and this is a deck that I'm actually really curious to try out. I literally have not played a game with this deck yet. This video was going to be the first games that I've ever played with this deck. All the thoughts that I've gone into this deck are purely theory based. Purely based off how I know the old Despot deck playing in the past, how I know the Zodiac Beast engine can mesh with it, all that sort of nonsense. Like that's all that's gone into this deck. I haven't tested a single thing and I'm actually very curious to see how it operates. So this is very much a first draft of the deck and it could potentially change quite a bit going into the future. It could increase in card count, it could do a lot of different things, but there's definitely some uh, some things I want to try and gain information on during this little bit of playtesting that I'm going to be doing with one of my Discord buddies. Uh, but other than that, I'm not going to waste any more time because basically there's no way that I could explain desk bots quickly if you don't know them. And if you don't know what Zodiac Beasts are, then you're basically just going to have to watch the video and figure out how it works from there because, I mean, it's very simple lines of play with multiple routes and you'll be able to pretty much pick up on it really quickly but other than that like i said let's not waste too much more time and let's just jump straight into the first game and see how this goes all right so this is definitely something that i'm very curious to see if it can be molded into something that actually takes shape and takes function because like i said previously this is uh this is very much the first draft it's very much something that's, uh, oh, he won Rock, Paper, Scissors and said for me to go first. Interesting. Uh, well, I've opened with Terra Top, and that's pretty much insane, and that's always great. Uh, so we'll go for that. Now, it might actually be worth to put something like Bear Man, uh, in this build, just so that you could try and draw into multiple cards. That way you could use Deskbot Base as well to, like, dig for more cards. It's definitely a thought process, especially since you do Pendulum Summon. Uh, so there's those potentials there, but basically I'm just going to be using the Zodiac Beast play to see what extra card I can get before utilizing whatever I do with my desk bot bases, basically, because essentially that's what I'm trying to do with this deck and trying to experiment around with is the fact that you could potentially just use the Zodiac Beast engine as a compact engine to carry so many different decks and archetypes. And this is kind of uh, this is kind of one of those instances. And I think that there's definitely something that could be worked with here because desk bots are inherently very good on card quality. So ultimately, I think like there's something that could be worked on there. Now it definitely is a deck that's uh, very well versed at OTKing people, and so it might just be able to like go away from that sort of focus and be more well versed in the long and grind game, basically, because the desk bot cards are very good at being very grindy. So. There's potential there as well, uh, but so I'm gonna activate this to search for the Viper, or excuse me, the Whiptail. Uh, who the fuck is Pierre? And let's see here, uh, Drancia and Emerald is the flavor of the month. Now the only thing I don't like about the Zodiacs in this deck, um, on a paper sort of like basis, is that it takes up your board presence, but at the same time it's taking up your board presence with a very high quality set of cards, like. And the fact that Emerald exists is going to continually put your stuff back. Man, rat, anger. Alright, well, so Deskbot Base is amazing in that it allows me to shuffle back other copies of Deskbot Base. Uh, so that's definitely something that's useful. And so it's terraforming, and I can actually Pendulum Summon um, at some point down the line. I can terraform for another Deskbot Base, but I actually... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I could set the terraforming as a bluff, uh, but I really don't really see a need. I've got Maxi, I've got Drancia backed up by Whiptail, um, and ultimately, I mean, I haven't made a single Deskbot play this game yet except for Deskbot Base, but then again, Deskbot Base is also a pseudo-draw engine to increase the consistency of you getting to your Zodiac Beast stuff, 
And Emerald is also just really good for the deck in theory because it allows you to keep recycling your Deskbot 2s and Deskbot 3s, which are your biggest power play enablers, back into your deck to draw and use. So there's all this sort of like theory that's going into this deck as I'm sort of constructing it on the fly. Like I said, this is very much the first draft. I threw this together and was like, let's make a video with this, see if it works, and see how well it uh, can be you know, received and maybe tweaked around. Like the deck is 44 cards. It can honestly probably be bigger as well to uh, accommodate um, this Interrupted Kaiju Slumber is actually just terrible for me, but I can at least max in and get a card out of it. Um, but uh, basically, the uh, the potential for this deck to actually include just a couple more cards, like, uh, like say, you know, including a couple more of the scales, including Deskbot 9, and just going up to like a 48 card deck is definitely possible, and then inherently makes your deck stronger against lawn mowing uh, matchups. So, excuse me, that grass looks greener. Ugh. I'm like with a name like that grass looks greener. I'm almost I would almost be happier with its original like English translated name. I'm making air quotes with my fingers as I talk because I talk with my hands, but you can't see that because of how I film. Uh, but really, Kaiju Slumber, kill my guy and pass. Interesting string of play. I've got Zodiac Barrage, so I can use Barrage. Um, to summon, I can use Barrage to summon my Thoroughblade, and then Thoroughblade will allow me to, uh, discard Whiptail, draw a card, and then I can go into Tigris, or Tiger Mortar. Um, I can get back the Rat, and then I can do things there, but I'm still just really low on terms of, uh, on what I have access to from that, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, yeah, activate this, I'm gonna... Cycle my hand through with Thoroughblade. This is another card that I could have in my deck is Instant Fusion, but I just don't have it. Um, I'm going to pop the Barrage itself. I was thinking about popping the base, but I can use base as a draw one uh, as well to try and go further into my deck. So I might as well do that, right? At least that's the theory. Uh, but So uh, Viper can go. This is Deskbot 5, which is actually pretty good once I get a Deskbot in Grave. Uh, but as it stands, I have not normal summoned yet, uh, so what I'll do is I'll shuffle back Deskbot base, Deskbot 6, and I'm going to keep the Deskbot 5, um, just because I feel like that's a little bit more valuable to me. Now, I've got Deskbot 2 here now, and I can Foolish for Deskbot 1, but that's not really going to do anything. The Foolish is literally just here for Deskbot 1. Um, I could probably put a Zephyros in this deck, too. There's just so much that I can just think of, in theory, that could make this deck work really, really well. And ultimately, uh, the only sort of limiting factors that I'm having issues with are basically uh, strictly, um, strictly uh, due to the fact that the deck size is already really like tight. Uh, but so what we'll do is we'll get Momorat here, and I can normal summon one, and then special another one from deck. Uh, so this isn't that great. But, I mean, it still makes me a rank 4 at the end of the day, and, like, that rank 4 is going to be good. Now, actually, I should probably, damn it, see, I could probably also just play, like, a, uh, a Beast Warrior scale, um, like, a high scale, and that way I could play more of the Deskbot, or a Beast Warrior low scale, I should say, and then I can play more of the Deskbot um, high scales and not have to really worry about anything else as far as, um, as, far as those types of cards. Now this Drancia is going to suck, because this Drancia only has one material, but at least I'll be able to deal with this uh, Jizukiru. He's going to be able to Kaiju me again next turn anyway, so I don't really care about the uh, about the Drancia having materials under it, because of the fact that it's going to be, you know, a thing that doesn't really exist for much longer. But So I'm going to make Emerald go back, I'm going to make Rat go back, and man, this is, my, my resource pool is getting really low in terms of what I've got available to me, so... Uh, rat back, rat back, and uh, and tiger mortar can go back. Draw a card, machine dupe. That's cool. Um, if I have a way to get rid of base next turn, I can machine dupe out multiple twos and get searches, and then just literally swap over to my deskbot engine and like have that. Cause that's the thing is that I've been playing this entire game off of the Zodiac engine alone, and as soon as I can't sustain that anymore, I can just swap over to the deskbot engine. So this game is definitely not 
I'm not in any sort of bad position, I would say, by any margin. Ah, okay, so it's another Burning Abyss Kaiju deck, even though this is a different guy that I'm playing against now. Interesting. All right, well, so Graf is going to be able to attack over Durancy. Oh, Kaiju BA Dark Lords. What? Oh, man. This is actually a cool concept. I mean, I I'm, I'm shouldn't be the one that starts like being like, Whoa, what is this? Because I'm literally playing like decks like Duskbot Zodiac Beast. Like, come on. I don't have the I don't have the like space here to uh, to be saying anything um, other than just wow. Uh, but so, okay, so Skarm is being specialed. He used this to put Ixshell in his hand. Oh no, damn it! I have goofed. I was definitely supposed to activate this dimensional barrier here. I got in awe of uh, of what was going on. <laughs> Trying to figure out the entire deck now. Based off, uh, based off if he activates anything else before he does this. Ah, uh, MX Saber Invoker. Oh, say, there's Zodiacs in here too? Whoa! Okay. All right. Well, so he activates this. I'm gonna dimensional barrier. Uh, calling Xyz, obviously. The I'm not worried about the Drancia yeah? uh, because it has no materials under it. Bonus points. Uh, so this Invoker is going to be irrelevant. The Graph can activate summoning. a BA from deck, um, Skarm, which dies, but he's already special Skarm from hand, so that effect isn't going to do anything. Okay, so I think that he's playing a small amount of BAs just to facilitate summoning Invoker to go into his zoo stuff. So this is Burning Abyss Dark Lord Kaiju Zoo. At least it seems that way. I could be wrong, but I mean, at least it seems that way. Now, I'm curious as to whether or not he's going to give me that. Okay, yeah, I didn't expect him to give me that kaiju because then that just immediately allows me to attack over his invoker. And Despot Three was an amazing card to draw here. Oh my god, uh, that was a great card to draw. Now I'm going to activate this first since I've gotten basically free reign to do so. Look at all of my fucking cards that are in grave. I need to put back a Drancia. I need to put back two rats. If I put back the Tiger Mortar already, I believe I have. So we'll put back these. Now the Despot base here prevents me from. Damn it! Damn it, Pierre! So upset. Uh, but the uh, the t uh, Despot base here prevents me from being able to um, to s multiply uh, to multiply my twos. That's the one I'm looking for. That's the uh, string of words I'm looking for. So I'm gonna shuffle these two back, and I'm gonna hope to draw a barrage. That is neither a barrage nor anything else of the sort. Uh, but I can just keep cycling through Deskbot bases. Actually, this is actually really good. Never mind, I can set this on top of this. Wow, okay, that wasn't even an out that I was expecting, but it's definitely something that exists. Uh, but So now I get to summon Deskbot 2, get a search, and then machine dupe for the other ones, and then, uh, and then I'll have a pendulum scale uh, set up and ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and foolish one after this uh, search resolves as well, so that I actually get access into that. Um, so that that can, uh, well, it's not going to come back because the board will be clogged, but, I mean, it might as well put it in grave, right? Because uh, it comes back and it gets big, so might as well. Despot 1, it also makes Nat Beast plays live, so might as well do that as well. But my entire board is just going to get very massive from here, so it's just going to be uh, easy to do. Now, this is one of those decks that I refuse to play IRL just because I do not want to do all this math. Um, to just to figure out how big these damn things get because they get huge they get swole they get so goddamn big and I do not have any sort of justification as to why they do such things uh, but so there's that and I can add another despot three to my hand and I should just be able to kill him this turn by uh, by doing three twos and all that because I can flip over this despot base they all get bigger yeah, these are all 2Ks. This is 25. This is 18. Um, I've normal summoned already. I know that for a fact I could overlay for a 2, but I had to make room in the extra deck, so I don't have a 2 in here. But if I did have a 2 in here, it'd be something like Augusta Phoenix. But these are actually just more damage anyway by themselves, so I think it's just worth... So yeah, we'll just we'll just do this. We'll go into a battle phase. Does this have to attack a monster? I can't remember. Nope, it does not. Uh, so... We will attack, and uh, and then the uh, la, 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 this can gain attack to something else. But yeah, so like 
Just like two card interactions are still OTKs even without Despot 9. It's just the problem is they're not really searchable, but most of your Despot 9 OTKs involve machine duplication anyway. So like that's the that's the thing. Um is that uh yes, damage calculation. We'll activate this here on this. That way it goes up to 45 and it's huge! And it's out of the park. Okay. So we're going to go into another game. Uh, just to see how this goes, but yeah, like I said, like this is definitely a deck that I feel like could, uh, I feel like the zoo cards really support a lot of different shit, and that's something that is really good. Okay, so he's electing to go first this time, uh, whereas he won rock, paper, scissors, and then told me to go first, which, I mean, I would have been fine going second, because this deck inherently does have very strong going second plays as well, because you get to bypass your normal summon with the barrage, and then you can do something like follow it up with say, in this example, Despot 3. If I draw Machine Duplication, then my hand is like completely woke, and it's just absolutely insane for what I'm capable of doing. But so he gets Rat, he gets Pierre, who the fuck is Pierre? Um, but so this hand is actually really cool for me as well. Oh, he's got Leica. Okay, I told him we were playing post-Zoo, but he's playing cards for Maximum Crisis that we don't get until the next set. I mean, I, when I mean post, when I meant post-Zoo, I just assumed it was universally accepted that I meant like the, uh, the whatchamadoodad, the, like, YCS Atlanta format, the YCS Seattle format, the, uh, shit, what is this set called? Um, the Raging Tempest format, not Maximum Crisis. But, I mean, it's fine. I don't expect that to be too overly real, because I don't even think he used its effect for anything. I think he just literally used it as a free overlay. And, like, that is just a better free overlay than, uh, than dumbass, like, Wild Bow, or whatever its name ended up being. I think it ended up being Wild Bow. Um, but this ended up being Broad Bull, and then this ended up being Dryden't. And so he's got, you know, a good thing. So ultimately the Leica is irrelevant. Um, Bujinte Kagasuchi. Okay, so he's milled. Kaiju Slumber, Graph, two of the Dark Lord cards. That was actually a pretty damn good mill. <laughs> this gets to search a Kaiju, and he gets, uh, and he gets to, uh, if he puts a Dark Lord on the board, one of the bigger ones, he can copy the Snatch Steel effect. And then he can, um, and then he can do things from there. Really? Oh, yeah, Ixtab is in grave because he discarded it earlier. I would love to look at your graveyard. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see this shit. That's one thing I just don't like about Yu-Gi-Oh Pro. It just doesn't let you. Okay, so he discarded the Regeki break for that. All right. So uh, no. So from here he gets to use the Snatch Steel Trap, and that's going to be a bit of an issue for me to deal with. This deck is definitely not built for going second for any of this, so that's going to be a problem. <laughs> but we can probably handle it. Uh, so we'll activate this and see if it gets like Drancyed. Um, if it doesn't get Drancyed, then that's going to be great for me because I'll be able to pop this and go into Thoroughblade. Thoroughblade will be able to discard the rep here from my hand, and then I'll be able to just basically cycle out a card and then see where we go from there. And basically, whatever happens from there. I guess I'm kind of okay with. Okay, so Drancy on this is definitely what's happening here, which I'm actually completely fine with. Um, can't say that it's the best thing in the world for to happen to me, but it's definitely something that I'm okay with uh, because I still have my preserved normal summon. Um, and so I will shuffle back just Despot Four. It's it's not necessary. I just drew another four. Whoa. Okay, okay. Uh, well. So let's see, this thing is uh, if a Bujin Beast Warrior. I just needed to, to, uh, to double check what its protection was uh, now. So he does have a Kaiju that he has access to, but I don't think I care about that too terribly much. Um, he's going to take my Molmarat, my Rat Pierre, and yeah, this was a bad play. I don't know why I didn't just play around that. I could have summoned this. Summoned two from the deck, and then I could have at least attacked over the Drancia. Yeah. I'm a dingus. <laughs> I completely forgot to play around these cards, even though I literally just mentioned that they could be there and be used if he stuck a Dark Lore on board. Like, I, I don't understand. I don't understand how I do these things. Sometimes I just amaze even myself with how absolutely ridiculously absent-minded I can be when I'm trying to commentate these games. But, regardless, I think I lose this game anyway. Like, look at how many cards he has over me. It's, uh, it's gonna be an issue. I mean, like, he gets to do this and he gets to use the 
Rhoda to search for more cards. Yeah, he just he is in such a bigger state of ability to kill me this turn. I think I think he could definitely kill me this turn. Uh, what did he discard here? I'm I'm I don't mean to be drawing out the clock, uh, but I am very curious um, just because I want to make sure that like I'm dying 100%. Uh, especially since I think he does have an altar in his graveyard. Yeah, he does. So he could use... Well, he's already used the Ixchel on board. So if he has the ability to put another one on board, another Dark Lord, then he could copy altar multiple times, in fact. Uh, and it would uh, it would definitely be a problem for me. But basically from here, I think I just lose because this is 25, this is 25. All he literally has to do is make like Acid Golem and I lose. <laughs> Um, or if he plays like Barbar, -bar, um, that would be a problem for me. Uh, oh, this is 25, 25, 26. Okay. So, I don't lose literally right now, but like I said, if he plays something like Barbar, -bar, which I mean, he could potentially play, I mean, I don't know how tight his deck list is, and he is playing 40, so he is keeping it at 40, so there might be some things that he's made cuts for that, uh, that would uh, that would otherwise be in his deck, but I've really been liking deck lists that are over 40 <laughs> recently. I don't know why, even without desires. Like I just like you know in this deck, I'm just like you know what? I guess 48 is a good number. I mean hell, I'm playing 44 now, and there's still like at least six or seven cards that I want to play. Uh, so like, eh, we'll we'll find out what happens here. Yeah, so Dante, Dante can detach Seer, and then. Is there Graf Engrave? No, there's not. That was last game. He's got the Skarm Engrave, though. So he could float into a Skarm rather effectively. Does he play Beatrice? Okay, he's keeping the Seer under the Dante. Uh, what did he mill? He milled Terra Top and another Dark Lord. Alright. Fair. Seems fair to me. My mouse does this thing where I'll literally let go of it and it will just start twitching around. Oh, he does play Beatrice! What a champ! Alright. Okay, so now I'm 100% positive that I lose. <laughs> Machine do! I can't use it because of Despot base. Wait, let's see if he uh, let's see if he Drancy is my base. Huh? Huh? If he Drancy is the base, I will let it go. I will let it go wholeheartedly. Yeah! Whoa! I still don't think I win, but goddamn, I'm gonna let it go. Even though I have the barrier down, I'm gonna let this shit go. And I'm going to normal summon this, and I'm going to use its effect, and summon two from deck, and get a search. Yeah! I still don't think I win by any stretch of the imagination, because he still has like a trap engrave for this, right? Yeah, he still has the snatch steal. Uh, so that's going to be a problem for me, but I just think it's cool, the fact that I'm just next level, like my way into at least being able to play. Uh, but otherwise, Beatrice here is detaching what? Seer or Dante? Detaching Dinte. Uh, I'm going to activate this barrier, calling Xyz, not Pendulum, no. Xyz, yes. Uh, this is only game two, and we're 21 minutes into this video. Like, these live commentary games, they take a long-ass time. That's definitely something that you need to be aware of uh, when you're doing this sort of shit, unfortunately. Okay, so he took my Despot too, so I'm not going to get searches, but I can... Machine dupe out multiple threes and then do despot base. Not good, but still not terrible. Uh, but yeah, so we'll do machine dupe and uh, summon two more threes from deck. <laughs> uh, this is. I don't know why I'm still playing this game. Uh, but we'll activate this. Literally, the only way I could see myself even remotely coming close to like winning this deck game, like, is if I drew barrage here. But nope, it's a rat. Uh, so what I've got to do here is I've got to I can kill this during this turn while it's uh while it's got its uh while it's got its uh, uh protection effect negated. Uh, and so from here I can do this. I can do this. I can make this bigger. Wait, did I just give up a game shot? God damn it, I did. I could have focused all of them on the three and attacked over my two. I'm a dumbass. This is three, th they both went up by 2,000. Oh, this one can still activate. Oh, baby. 
Did I not fuck it up? No, I still fucked it up. It's gonna be... It's gonna be too... Too much. Damn it! I could have just gamed him! Fuck! I didn't see it! Damn it! Ah, <laughs> uh, when you don't see the combo! Alright, well... I'm gonna attack this. And then I'm gonna attack the Drancia. I literally had game this turn! No! I didn't think about it! I didn't think that he literally just put a thousand attack point monster on his side of the field. I didn't look that he was at 5,000, because I haven't touched him this game. He's been burning himself down with Ixshell. Missed legal? Yeah, man, I know. Yeah, man, I know. You better believe. Uh, like, all I had to do was attack over the Despot 2 and pump all of my Despot 3s. Why did I not see that? I mean, it's still good because I mean, I can still just uh, I can still just pump these. I don't know how he gets over all of them. Um, I mean, he has one kaiju, so uh, I mean, damn. Oh, he's got kaiju slumber. Yeah, I just lose this game now because he's just gonna summon a bigger kaiju than me and attack over for 400. Ah, uh, damn it! How do I miss lethal like that? What? No, don't you dare! Don't you dare! crash on my ass Yu-Gi-Oh Pro there we go all right so I'm going first <laughs> that was so terrible I could have easily just won that game if I had just actually paid attention to the board state that's what I get for trying to commentate videos live people like it I guess they like it because I fuck up uh, but like commentating is hard commentating while you're playing is super hard like everyone gives me shit for like playing like a dumbass but I mean you try and commentate and then play as competitively as you possibly can. Play the best game you possibly can. It's definitely not something you can just do. Um, <laughs> believe you me, it's definitely not. Because it literally takes two separate like sectors of your brain. And if you are not naturally good at multitasking, then ooh, it's gonna be bad. Um, it's gonna be a bad time. But so now we're just gonna literally sit here and we're gonna do Zodiac Beast plays. Fuck me, I'm so upset. Missed lethal! Missed lethal! I could have gamed him over my own monster! Fuck! Ugh. Man, I suck at this game. Um, well, I don't know. Suck is a relative word. Um, <laughs> sucking is relative. Uh, let's see. So, what we'll get is we will get this emerald here. And this emerald will now put back my resources. Yeah. Put those things back. Hopefully draw like... Yeah, that'll work. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that wholeheartedly. Uh, but so I've got Emptiness and I've got D-Barrier. Now hopefully I don't get Twin Twisted. I mean, he does play Floaters. So, I mean, there is that, but... That's a bit unfortunate. Damn it. I could have literally ended this video last game. This is sad for me. I don't like it. I don't like it, but I mean, it's a longer video, so I guess if you guys want that, and you guys enjoy that, then I guess we're gonna have fun. I mean, luckily, I'm so, like, inherently good at just speaking my mind, and not really caring, and also being able to formulate, like, coherent and proper thought structures, that I'm capable of just speaking throughout the entirety of a video, and there's very little radio silence, if at all any. You will very be much like you'll be very hard pressed to actually find a uh, a part of one of these videos that is um, that has more than 10 seconds of silence from me unless I'm literally thinking through a play very deeply but I'm going to try and win this game with vanity's emptiness um, and we're gonna see how well that goes I don't even need to pop this tour guide I was literally about to pop the tour guide but it actually just doesn't matter so uh, what Oh. Mm. <sighs> well, I might be popping the tour guide now, just so that I can, uh, just so that I can resolve this emerald uh, while it has, uh, while it has some materials under it. Really wish I could attack with it this turn, but again, not paying attention. Uh, but so let's see. I'm just gonna reset my entire Zodiac Beast pool of uh, of resources. That seems fine. Uh, who the fuck is Pierre? Why are you? <laughs> Why do I have two rats in my hand? That is so retarded ignorant. All right, 
We're gonna normal summon this third blade and we're gonna start cycling these rats back into the graveyard where they belong. At least I can re-equip them with Tiger Mortar. Um, like, this is irritating. Terra Top, hell yeah. Now, as soon as I get the Takatom Borg out from under here, we can talk. Um, but so I can turn you to attack mode and I can, I can activate this at any point that I wish. But basically, I'm just gonna attack with these first. Uh, and if I run into like a Mirror Force, then I'd be incredibly surprised. Um, that would definitely be something I'm not expecting, like, straight off the get. Like, the get-go. Uh, but I can activate this, put it under the Drancia, and attack with it. Uh, so I can at least get my little chip damage in. And the thing is, even if he outs the Emptiness, I have D-Barrier. But he plays Dark Lords, which are very strong, and are unaffected by D-Barrier. So that's gonna be an issue. Potentially. Potential issue. Uh, is this going to be one of those games where I don't use the deskbox en like engine unless I'm going for game? I mean, it might be. I mean, I didn't go for game last game, so there's, I guess, an inherent problem there, but... Hey, man. Whatever. Yeah, that's exactly kind of what I thought this card was. I really thought that this card was definitely um, that. So what I'm going to do here, since he's going to be destroying the card anyway and it doesn't target, I'm not going to get the diddle. Uh, I'm not going to let him pop that and like have it for free so I'm gonna at least emptiness him for a little bit on his turn um, I mean it, it negates my Drancia which also means it's like incentivized to, for him to not pop it uh, because it doesn't actually like matter but he can't summon Xyz monsters so like yeah it's popped like I think it was just better to do that in like in just the pure essence of if I didn't do that this card doesn't target he could have targeted that um, in the resolution and destroyed it and then that would have been very bad for me so uh, I think that was I think that was the correct play. I think. I do not know, but I do think. Uh, but so I'm gonna activate this and summon fucking Pierre from my deck, and I'm going to then go into my stuff and stuff. And from here I can actually, hmm, what can I do? Uh, emptiness. Um. Like, hmm. I don't... I don't know what he's talking about. I don't actually know what you're talking about. Uh... I don't actually know what you're talking about. I also might have to start muting uh, opponents in these games. Really actually might. Just because I'm filming them live now, so like... They're starting to get sassy with me on camera. Um... Oh, I see. Alright, well, now that that's out of the way, uh, we'll do this, and I can, uh, I can normal summon here, and I will normal summon, uh, this, and I'm gonna go into Emerald, uh, another Emerald, and from here, I'm gonna go into Drancia, probably, um, let's see, Drancia, and we'll put back the Viper. Um, so I'll probably go into Drancia to pop this. Ah, Machine Duplication! That card's pretty fucking good, I hear. Um, but so what I can do here is I can go into Drancia, I can go into Broad Bull. I mean, I won't have Drancia on his turn, which is gonna suck. Um, but actually, no, never mind. I'm a dumbass. I can just do this. Check this shit out. Um, start summoning Molmorat. So I'll start summoning Molmorat while I've got this free space. And then I will, uh, then I'll summon, uh, my Broad Bull. And I will get my search, and then I will be able to summon Drancia with the Molmorat under it, and that will allow me to pop my uh, Invoker, and then I will be able to summon the other Molmorat from that. Seems pretty good, right? At least I think so. Uh, so that will allow me to have another rank 4, even though the rank 4 probably doesn't actually matter. Um, so yeah, there's that. But so we can activate this, the Viper's in my hand to be put under the Drancia as another material anyway, so I'm not really too worried about it. Um, let's see, yeah, do I even have a rank 4 to summon? No, I don't. <laughs> All of this play string was for nothing. I am a dumbass. Do not worry, my fellow friends. Uh, this is probably a Skarm. Uh, let's be real here. Probably something like a Skarm that I can't kill. Yep! Damn, man, I'm just really good at calling things today. Except my game shots. For some reason, I can't call those very well. Uh, and that's going to be the problem. But, so, from here, he's free to do basically whatever he wants as long as he can get around the Drancia. Now, I could just get interrupted Kaiju Slumbered here. 
for what would constitute a blowout, uh, because then both my emeralds would be gone, and it would just be a bad time for everybody. Um, but so what I can just uh, hope to God happens is uh, some other things. Now, I'm going to actually pop the shit out of this Dante. Um, I actually don't care that he's going to get back a Skarm, uh, because, like, if he gets back a Skarm, that means that the one that went to Graveyard is not going to get its search effect at the end of the turn if he special summons it from hand anyway. So I'm actually just not worried about that <laughs> at all. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I don't know what I was expecting anything else. I don't know why I wasn't expecting something like this to happen, actually. Now that I think about it, I mean, Zoo is definitely capable of just doing this, but I'm going to be able to, next turn, be able to do more things. See, this is something I don't understand. I don't understand what he's doing with this. Oh, other than just summoning this from deck. Okay, that's it. I'm just, I'm tripping balls. I'm tripping balls at this point because I've been filming for 35 minutes, and it's just, ooh, I'm just losing it because I could have had this over on the second game if I had just paid attention. Pay attention, please, dueler man. Uh, but so, hmm, interesting. He's doing the sequence of plays that loses the DD Crow. Interessante. But, whatever. So, what's going to happen here is I'm going to basically lose my Emerald, uh, which means that I'm going to be cut off from them for the rest of the game, which means basically now I'm going to have to switch over to my Deskbot engine, which I can very effectively do. It's definitely not a problem. Um, damn, what did he mill? He milled probably some good shit, right? Uh, that's not my graveyard. F5 is, uh, F5 is my opponent's graveyard. He milled Graf, he milled a Kaiju, and he milled the Slumber. Damn. Hmm. Cool. Alright. Well, so I'm dealing with this Kagetsuchi again. Uh, which... I mean... Let's see, this... Dante is in attack mode. Hmm... It's gonna be in defense mode, so I shouldn't really count on that as a factor. Now, depending on what I draw next turn in form of Deskbot card, like say I draw like Deskbot 6 next turn, or another Deskbot 5, then that's going to be good for me in the aspect of I'll be able to Deskbot 2 Machine Dupe into scales to summon two Deskbot 5s, make infinity. So there would be that. But so yeah, he's popped the Emerald that had the materials under it. So this Terra Top is actually not going to do anything because the Takatomborg is now permanently locked in the graveyard land. Um, so that's going to suck. Uh, I can probably attribute this entire game and this entire loss to just my shitty play after literally tilting myself um, from the previous game, from just not seeing my thing. Like when I misplay, especially when I misplay on camera, I get really like agitated about it and I start playing like an absolute trash bag. Like, you, you don't understand. I actually just start doing this, and I know that I do this, and it's a habit that I need to break. Luckily, this is not something that I do, like, at major events, because I'm not playing on camera, and I'm not having to talk about the mistake that I just made. But I can try and brush it under the rug in my mind, you know? Do that sort of thing. Uh, but for the rest of this... Wow, look at you being a turn late! What the fuck do you think you're doing? Alright. Four level four Beast Warriors, eh? Well, here's what we're gonna do. Is we're just gonna put it here. Give her there, pal! I'm gonna start with Adrancia. And now at this point, yeah, Beatrice? Okay, I'm fine with Beatrice. Uh, I'm actually curious as to what this Beatrice is gonna be doing. If he sends a Farfa, then I'm going to just use Drancia to pop the Drancia. And then he'll use his Drancia to pop my rat. And then from an open board state, uh, it'll be fun. So I'll be able to special summon Terratop in attack mode just to be extra damage. And then I'll be able to normal summon two and do machine do. Because two gives um, all machines 500 attack and defense. And this is a machine, so it will definitely just be huge for no apparent reason other than it will be. Um, hmm, sending a Kaiju Slumber to Grave, even though he already has one. That one's interesting. Um, hmm, weird. Alright. I mean, I'm not going to question it. Uh, but I'm going to activate this Drancia here, and I'm going to pop his Drancia. Uh, that's definitely something that's not up for debate. I'm definitely just going to do that. And so this is going to destroy it, which means this is going to save itself multiple times. Which is going to be 
bad for me. Oh my god, he actually didn't pop my Durant here. That's right. He didn't. My entire play line was anticipating him to try and fork up my Drancia, and then I would just Drancia's Drancia, and he'd do this, and I'd have an open board. But that's not the case anymore. Whoops. All right, well, so we're activating this. We're going to do this. And so what I'm going to get, in fact, is I'm going to get multiples of these, and I'm going to get Deskbot base off of one of them, and then just a card that I want to throw away off the other. Uh, or is that even what I do? Deskbot base will put them all up to 2K. So it's definitely something that's worth. Um, or I could get, let's see, 3,600. Can I punch 36? Can I punch 35 over the Beatrice? You know what? Fuck it. We're going to try. Um, so I'm going to add the low scale and I'm going to add Duskbot 3. Right? We're going to see if this works. Uh, I don't think it works. I, don't, I think it's going to be off by just like a couple of points. Uh, but you know what? Uh, it doesn't hurt to try. In fact, my math just might be wrong. I mean, there's a reason I don't play Despots like IRL or on like Dueling Book or on DN when it was still around, was because I just cannot keep up with all the complex maths that are going on here. Uh, but I'm going to go into battle phase. I'm going to go ahead and activate its effect on itself and see how big it gets. Yeah, 5,000 is definitely not big enough. 100% not big enough. Um,. So I'll just attack this. I mean, he'll get his floater out and blah, blah, blah. It's going to be something that I have to deal with. He's got Farfa in his hand, which I'm going to have to deal with at some point. But at this point, I'm fine with it. I don't care. I really don't. I don't. I just want this video to end. It's a 40-minute long video. Jesus Christ. I do not like these because people don't want to watch them. People have short attention spans. Ugh. I'm actually getting upset. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Slap a two minute intro onto this video and we're already at 45 minutes. Goddamn. I said girl goddamn. All right. Well, this Maxi was a turn late, so I mean, I guess it's gonna have to deal with that somehow. Um, so let's see, this was, this gains 500 for every Despot card you currently control. So it gains one, two, three, four, five, six. So it gains 3k. So he's able to do multiple interrupted kaiju slumbers. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and drop this max save. And I'm going to activate Despot 3 and boost one of the twos. <laughs> this seems so irrelevant, but I literally want him to kaiju over like this. Um, like, I want him to be forced to kaiju over this if he's trying to kill me. Like, there's, there's a reason behind my madness. Uh, I can definitely confirm this much. But ultimately... At this point, I just want this video to be over. So I'm just going to reconcile myself to the land of defeat and ultimately try to go back to thinking about how I want to uh, to improve this deck and how I want to change it around because, like I said, it has multiple different things that it like, can function on in terms of uh, axes of how it operates. There's multiple different card oper like quantities that you can have in here. This is very much a first draft. I literally threw this deck together today, earlier today, played zero games with it, it was just like, this looks really good on paper, and was like, alright, let's try this. And was like, that's literally all that I did. <laughs> and so, okay, so over my Drancia, okay. Dimensional Barrier, now he's gonna do that, I get to drop another Dimensional Barrier. Man, this shit looks like the deck is just set to not shuffle. But, I know the deck is set to shuffle because I've been drawing different opening hands. So, like... Uh, so like, I don't know what else to say about that. Um, but so this Dante's coming back, Machine Duke, irrelevant. I don't have a way to resolve Emerald anymore. Um, in actual fact, I probably, I'm thinking back to like that turn where I made the second Emerald. Because I almost always, like, have this strict rule in my mind of I never summon the second Emerald unless I can put back the first Emerald so it's infinite. And I definitely broke that rule there. And I'm wondering... If there was any way that I could have made Drancia, I'm trying to think back onto that play. If there's any way I could have made Drancia pop that first emerald and then shuffled back it with the second emerald. I don't know. But anyway, this video is long as fuck. So let me know if you guys enjoyed it. If you even made this made it this far, give me a hashtag deskbots in the comments down below. Because I mean, Jesus Christ. Hashtag Bunborg, I mean, Jesus. Oh. Hashtag Office Max. We'll go with that one. Give me a hashtag office max in the in the comments if you made it this far. But other than that, thank
Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. Jesus Christ, you are a legend. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description to my Facebook page if you want to chat, chat with me, connect with me, whatever. Also, a link to my Patreon page will be in the description as well as on the video itself if you want to support me directly and do all that sort of nonsense and help me make future content and support my ability to make content and improve content into the future, then definitely go check that out. Even pledging something as little as a dollar definitely helps out a ton, but if you do anything two or more, you get entered into a monthly raffle giveaway for things like boxes, structure decks, mats, and stuff like that. It changes based off the month, and the amount of raffle prizes I give away changes based off the amount of people who are pledged to me, so definitely go check that out if you're interested. But other than that, thank you for watching so much again, as I've already said. Thank you for your time as usual. I'll see you guys in the next video, and as always, guys, take care.